Hey everybody, welcome to In the Red Zone. Sean and Mike here, week six, college football picks. The season is flying by. What do you think about week five? Anything jump out to you? Uh, a couple things. <laughs> um, man, I, I told y'all, if, you, if you've been watching since the first show, I let y'all know there's going to be some programs that just look at this year as a free year. Um, and, and not directly. I don't think any coach came out into their locker room and said, hey, packing it up, you know, we're yeah. just going to – because um, I'm leading to OU being one of those programs. Um, they are very young. Uh, good news was this last week Ronnie Perkins will be back. He won his appeal. Um, I don't know why he traveled to Ames and did not suit up and play. Yeah. I don't know if they're just trying to ease him in before the Texas game, but – um, they just look to me like one of those teams that, um, you know, a lot of pre-snap, uh, uh, mm -hmm. formation, the players look like they're in the right places. Mm -hmm. So the play calls on defense don't look just atrocious, but then, you know, you've got a player coming, a, a DB, I don't want to mention names yeah. just right yeah. off, right off the bat. Um, but you've got players just coming in and taking terrible angles who are in their third or fourth year. Um, and it's, it's man, it, there's, there's some problems, um, big time problems on that team. And, and so, but then I look at the team and I think, well, then why aren't younger guys playing? You've got, mm -hmm. you've got guys like Jeremiah Cradell, um, Bryson Washington, who Grinch came out last year and said this, was my recruit, this is the one recruit I wanted to get. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was the, you know, um, just just his prized possession, that, that recruiting class, and he can't even find his way onto the field for yeah. some reason. And he's only a redshirt freshman, so I don't get it. Um, I know they're still trying to win games and play who they think, but even guys that, that uh, you know, Grinch came in and, and said, you know, if you can't tackle, you're going to be on the bench. You're not mm -hmm. going to play if you can't make a tackle at the University of Oklahoma. And then guy that just whiffs on a tackle gets right back so, out there. But and, I attribute some of that to, and, and I don't think it's just a co because of COVID. Teams around the country more and more are not hitting. They're not yeah. during the week. They're not doing tackling drills. Yeah. So you, uh, Grinch can't come out and say, if you can't tackle, but if you're not practicing tackling, if you're not actually working on, you're not hitting full speed yeah. in practice, you can't expect these guys to go out and make plays during a game. Yeah, and hitting an oversized donut does not, right. <laughs> does not no. count. I, you know, and you see that all the time, at, at, especially at the high school level, where it, when you're hitting a pad that doesn't hit back, kids are, yeah, they're ferocious, they're beasts, and then when they get in there with actual contact, you see some kids start to shy away. Yeah. And so you have to have live tackling and live hitting. Yeah. And, and you know something else I brought up, and. I mentioned this on a message board. Another OU fan brought this up. We didn't get in an argument or anything, but I just asked the question, when was the last time you saw Lincoln Riley really rip into a player on the sideline for getting a stupid penalty or making a mistake or something? I have never seen yeah. that. I've never seen it. I, I do I've not think... I've seen it a couple times, but I can't, I can't think of any time recently that maybe when he was an OC yeah. um, did he do it, but um, he's more yelling at referees than his players. And, and, and that, to me, is a problem. Yeah. So I think that's a problem because he, I, don't, I don't know if he has it in him to be the head coach he needs to be. I mean, we've yeah. seen Bob Stoops before lose it on players. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, that's, and you, he tries to be... He, uh, the appearance, I don't know, I'm not there, so I don't know, but the appearance is he's trying to be their friend when he needs to be their coach. Yeah. And they're, they're very undisciplined, and especially on defense. And to me, another issue that I'll bring up is that, I'm sorry, but when you talk about the lack of high quality recruits on defense, when your head coach, like I've been down there to their practices in fall camps, Riley's ever with the offense 100% of the time. Yeah. He's never involved with the defense. The head coach is never on the defensive side of the field, ever. And so if you're a five-star recruit defensive player, why do you want to go to OU when the head coach is never involved? Yeah. Is Lincoln Riley going into the homes of these recruits, a five-star defensive back? Is he recruiting? No, he's focused on offense. Everything is focused on offense for him. He needs to get an offensive coordinator. He needs to become a true head coach and take responsibility and get more involved with that defense. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people are starting to think that um, Lincoln Riley does need to, even if he you know, hires somebody within – the program that he can kind of mold and, mm -hmm. and show, you know, how he calls plays. And um, because there's not another um, open 
offensive minded uh, genius, I yeah. would say. Yeah. There's not another Lincoln Riley out there that you can just hire onto the staff and say, okay, you're running the plays. But he can um, still hire an offensive coordinator and then he can still call the plays if he wants to. Yeah. But he really needs somebody but how during much the week. Do you, because didn't Gundy do that for Mike Gundy do that he for did. a little bit? Yeah. Um, I mean, you just, how do you. I don't know. There's there's a lot of it, it kind of complement uh, complicates it. Um, Bottom line is the co- head coach can't be completely MIA yeah. from the defense. Yeah. He just can't do it. And if you're somebody who's an offensive genius like he is, you're you, you, the defense could use your mind. Yeah. I mean because you know these offenses, so who better to help the defense prepare yeah. for an offense like that than this coach who's an offensive genius? I don't yeah. know. That's just me. But anyway, I, and I'm not on the fire Grinch um, train no. yet. Um, I do think it's it, it was it was going to be a multi-year process, um, but the lack of effort on some of those defensive uh, series was just mind-boggling. Yeah. I mean, for Grinch to be the kind of have the mentality that he has, either these players just aren't listening to him, mm-hmm. or he's not getting the job done um, uh, otherwise. Well, and so, I'm, I'm part of me thinks, you know. It, those Ohio State fans had a, had we, something right. I mean, nobody, you guys tried yeah. to warn us. Nobody was <laughs> upset when he left. We didn't want. And yeah. At Ohio State, look, it, it doesn't matter what you think of the Buckeyes. Year in, year out, they have nearly. A tre- I mean, they have a tremendous defense every year. Year in, year out, and they yeah. put first rounders in the NFL every single year. And he came in there, and he wanted to change all that. He wanted to recruit different style of players, and yeah. that everybody's like, "Whoa, wait." We're not going to change what works. And yeah. so that's why they were kind of like, okay, you want to leave? Leave. I mean, so, um, you know, he just, he he has a different mentality, a different style because of where he came up coaching and being at Washington State and having to, having to come up with schemes that utilize less skilled players. Yeah. And so that's what he knows. And so that's what he's trying to do at OU where instead of trying to build it up with higher skilled players. Yeah. But, Anyway, okay, let's not stay on that too long. Sure. Let's, uh, a couple more things to bring up, a few more games of interest. Um, we both picked SMU to win. They won over Memphis. Uh, that was a really good game. Yeah. Bouchelle played pretty good. Another one, uh, West Virginia beat Baylor. I was glad I picked West Virginia on that one. Um, and Arkansas. That game, that game was so boring. I tried to watch. <laughs> I tried to yeah. watch for so long, and I yeah. just – I couldn't. I remember yeah. just changing the channel. I was just like, this is so boring. Yeah. This does not look like okay. a Big 12 match. Before we move to Arkansas, just one thing I want to say about Baylor, West Virginia. Um, Charlie Brewer, I am I'm starting to believe that you know, his everything he had done prior to this year was a system thing. Yeah, think totally. It, it's a system thing. Yeah. And another quarterback that, that, that pops into my head when I think about um, – I just lost my train of thought. There was another quarterback I was going to bring up, but – yeah, Charlie Brewer. Oh, uh, Stidham. When Jared Stidham was yeah. at Baylor as a freshman, yeah, you know, lights out. Yeah, he goes to Auburn. Everyone thought he was going to do that at Auburn, and he didn't. And I think the system that has as style, much to do. Yeah, it's that pro yeah. style system where you're handing the ball off, you yeah. know, fifty times a game, yeah. and um, that's what I saw from Brewer. And I'm like, he's a drop back passer. Yeah. I mean, he is a he's he's a. a a gamer. I mean, mm-hmm. you you gotta you gotta let that guy um, sling the ball, yeah. and and he's just handing the ball off, handing the ball off, and and it just it got just so boring yeah. for me. I it, agree. That, that did not look like Baylor. And one last game I want to bring up, Arkansas. Mm-hmm. I said last week. I told you don't get on that leech train just yet. You yeah. said you're all in. And- yeah, Arkansas pulls out the win. I was really happy to see Arkansas win. I, I do Congratulations, think, Razorback fans. I do think a little bit of that, um, or a lot, um, don't know yet. Uh, we'll see this next week. But I do think some of that is such a big win over LSU that, yeah. you know, we beat the defending champs. Sure. Um, maybe a little bit of a hangover there. Um, you know, uh, I don't remember if it was you I was texting with, but uh, somebody I was talking to, I said, you know, um, some teams just play up or down to their competition. Um, and, and so... But this is kind of... I brought it up last week, and this this is Mike Leach's teams. Yeah. They, you know, Washington State, when he was there, it's like they win a couple of these games. You're like, whoa, hang on a second. Yeah. Then we pick them, and their defense doesn't show up. Yeah. And that's kind of what happened here. And it's just... That's what you get with Mike Leach. Yeah. That's what you get. You're going to get all offense, uh, you know... 
Costello's thrown 119 times so far this year, more than I think anybody in the country. That's what you're going to get. You know, yeah. just going to wing it every time. And if you're not hitting the passes or the defense figures out a coverage scheme that works, you're dead in the water. I mean, that's yeah. just his offense. And good for Arkansas. I mean, yeah. Sam Pittman there. Um, hopefully he can get them somewhat relevant. Yeah. And it would be crazy if they started being better than Texas A&M. And yeah. Oh, and then the other game, line. another game that I wanted to bring up because it was uh, it was North Carolina. They didn't cover, but it was a great game yeah. that they played. I think it was Boston College that they played. Uh, where was that? Who they had this week? Uh, I think. Uh, anyway, there was an interception on, on a two point uh, two point conversion, interception return for a touchdown. Yeah, that was like a pick two, so you don't see that very often. Yeah, but anyway, anything else you want to get onto the picks? I think I'm good. Okay, let's get into week six picks. That's what <laughs> everybody like wants. Last week, just yeah. man. We got 15 games day. we're going to pick here. Obviously, we're not picking every single game that's being played this week. Picking the ones of interest. Um, just as a note, no, we're not picking the Baylor game. Uh, Baylor has looked awesome though. They they looked pretty incredible this past week. Anyway, so let's Baylor? get started. No, BYU. BYU. No, BYU. Okay. I'm sorry if I said Baylor. <laughs> I meant like. We just talked about I meant, that. <laughs> I meant BYU, BYU. Okay, first game, Louisville, six-point favorite at Georgia Tech. A couple of notes here. Uh, Louisville quarterback Malik Cunningham, he's 54 of 91, 757 yards, seven touchdowns, five interceptions. Georgia Tech's quarterback, Jeff Sims, uh, he's throwing three touchdowns and eight interceptions this yeah, year. Yeah, he's not uh, Georgia Tech is only averaging 19 points per game, but they're giving up 33 points per game. Um, they're giving up almost 450 yards per game. Uh, Louisville... Both teams lost their last two games, Louisville losing to Miami and Pitt, Georgia Tech losing to UCF and Syracuse. Yeah, and UCF, man. And they lost to Tulsa. to Tulsa this so, last week. Yeah, so that's, that's that was a, a That was another game we could have talked about. Exactly. Um, so anyway, Louisville, a six-point favorite here. Oh. Yeah. And it, before we get into picking this, FSU and Jacksonville State. Oh, I was not going to bring that up. I thought about it, but I didn't want to bring it up. I mean, Florida State ends up winning the game. But, I know. I mean, it but, was ugly. But what was that going into the, the third quarter? Yeah. Was that third quarter that I they... Think it was third quarter. Man, down 21-7. to seven, yeah. And then then just coming alive there. Yeah. And hopefully that puts a little spark under them. I was going to bring that up later when we pick them against okay. Notre Dame. But okay. Anyway, okay, back to this one. Let's finish the pick on this one. Louisville, six-point favorite at Georgia Tech. I like Georgia Tech. I like what their coaches are trying to do there. I, I, I just... You know, they're, they're one I'm rooting for, but Louisville has way too much offense for Georgia Tech. I yeah. don't think Georgia Tech, and I think this spread should be higher than this, so I'll take Louisville. Yeah, I'm six. taking Louisville as well. Um, they've got playmakers on the office, on offensive side of the ball. Mm -hmm. um, they've got a decent enough defense, um, but Sims for Georgia Tech just does yeah. not look great at this point in the season. Right. Okay, next game, Texas at Oklahoma, or neutral site game, Red River Rivalry, and they're in Dallas. OU, a two-and-a-half-point favorite. Just a couple of stats here. Sam Ellinger for Texas. He's thrown for 924 yards, 14 touchdowns, and two interceptions. Uh, Rattler for OU, 977 yards, 10 touchdowns, four interceptions. Um, on offense, Texas is averaging 51 points per game. OU is averaging 37. On defense, Texas has given up 30.7 points per game. OU is giving up 25. That stat a little bit because of Missouri State. Not It's yeah. kind of a little... little um, Skewed Should be there. around 30. Yeah. 30 so so. Um, both offenses are averaging over 500 uh, yards per game. Uh, of course, Texas coming off a loss to TCU and OU coming off the loss to Iowa State. So uh, not as big of a game as we thought it might be this year going into yeah. the season. Um, and then, you know, but I'll say this, 14 touchdowns in the first few games for Sam Ellis, that's a lot. I mean, Yeah, and only two interceptions. Yeah. He's taking care of the ball. Yeah. So, that um, you know, that's – but neither team pl is playing defense right now. I mean, yeah. they can't stop anything. It might as well be out there playing against air because, um, and I don't see that getting fixed this week. Yeah, Ellinger threw four touchdowns this last week against TCU. He was 17 of 36. Mm -hmm. um, not great uh, as far as uh, completion percentage there. Mm -hmm. um, he only averaged 6.6 6 yards um, a pass and then had a QBR of 74.5. He also rushed eight times for 49 yards. So that's one thing that um, I do think the defensive line for Oklahoma has has been a bright spot for that defense. Um, and like I said earlier in the show, 
Ronnie Perkins comes back, and that's going to be huge. Mm -hmm. um, they need him, and it was obvious he was on the sideline because those guys were flying around. I mean, yeah. they were constantly providing pressure um, against Iowa State. It was just the pass defense was just completely horrible for, uh, um, for Oklahoma's defense. And Brennan Eagles has come alive for uh, Texas. Um, but who does Texas have on the defensive side who's going to be able to match up against Austin Stogner? He really had a crazy, incredible game this last week. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we'll just see if they have the speed to match up with um, Rambo. Didn't really impress me. Theo Weiss is a guy that was supposed to come on this year. Um, Marvin Mims is showing um, a little bit of flash this year, but he's still a freshman, mm -hmm. a true freshman. Um, and then Seth McGowan, true freshman for uh, in, in the running back. Um, I mean, we'll just see. And we'll also see if any movement happens with those other two players that are suspended. Okay. Um, I did hear that it was a different situation with Ronnie Perkins. Maybe he had some kind of a secondhand smoke situation, contact high type of deal. Um, and maybe that's why the other guys weren't, their suspensions weren't lifted. So um, I'm going to take OU this week. I, I just think that something has to break for them. Um, and with both teams, just their defense not being there, um, I don't know. Grinch came out and said that the the fix for the defense is simple, but it's not going to be easy. Yeah. Um, it's just that leads me to believe it's mentality. And yeah. going into to the Red River rivalry, um, they're going to need to lean on their leadership this week, and we'll see who the leaders are. Ronnie Perkins being back out on the field is huge because he's one of their leaders. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to pick Oklahoma. Um, and, and just to let you know, I'm not being biased. I picked Texas this last week to cover, and I picked Oklahoma not to cover this last week. Yeah. I believe I also picked Texas last year in the same game. You so, did. Yeah. Um, so anyway, you know, uh, I just I, I think something has to break for them, um, and and we'll see we'll see what happens. I think Oklahoma's offensive line, even though they haven't been great, I think they're a little bit better than what Texas has. Um, to offer on the O-line, so, um, but those running backs for, for um, Texas are, are yeah. probably playing better than Oklahoma of at this point. Of course, point. the atmosphere is not going to be the same. No Texas State Fair. I don't know how many fans they're allowing, but it's not going to be near as I ruckus think, as normal. I think 25%. Yeah, so like most schools that are allowing fans, it's 25%. So yeah. um, to me, I'm going to take Texas. I think Texas outright wins the game. I think the difference in this, of course, I think it's just a back and forth shootout. And to me, the difference in it is you have a redshirt freshman in Rattler, you have the uh, senior in Ellinger. And I think that in this rivalry game is the difference in the game coming down at the end. Yeah. So um, it, if, if Texas were a favorite, you know, six or so, I might take OU. But the fact that OU is the favorite, I just kind of think Texas outright wins the game, so I'll take Texas. Which I was kind of surprised that, that Oklahoma was the favorite. I was too. Here. That's, yeah. um, so you guys should probably jump on that quick before it changes. Yeah, totally. I do think it'll be a close game. Um, this might go to even by kickoff. Yeah, but here's the thing. If Oklahoma does win, that'll be the fourth, uh, <laughs> that'll be the fourth QB for Oklahoma to beat Sam Ellinger. Because Baker yeah. beat him, yeah. Kyler beat him, and Jalen beat him. Yeah. And... Eh, I'm tempted to take Texas, but I just got to think that Oklahoma's not going to lose three in a row. I just think uh, with also with OU, you know, it doesn't really matter what the outcome of the season is. It's not like Lincoln Riley's going to be on the hot seat. Yeah, yeah. People are ne OU fans are never going to be, never going to be happy. They're never going to be happy with two losses, but he's not on the hot seat. It's a different situation in Texas. Yeah, I mean, it is That's different. True. I mean, so I think they there's more of an urgency there to win, whereas. Honestly, the other thing for OU is trying to get these kids to where they're not just giving up on the season and throwing it away and saying, yeah. you know what, we're done. Like, we shouldn't even have played. Well, or and something. with Texas, um, you know, you saw that a lot of their players had gotten COVID mm -hmm. um, early in the season. So most of their team isn't going to have to deal with that. So, yeah. yes, there's still protocols, and yes, the season is still different. But a team like them or LSU who had – Tons of players in the in the outset of this that mm -hmm. had a lot of players. Um, you know, are their ads going to let them use that as an excuse at the end of the season? Yeah. Personally, I don't think any coach should be on the hot seat after the season since it's just basically 
you know, COVID is just kind of a different animal and just making yeah. things a, a whole heck of a lot harder yeah. for staffs and programs. But um, I mean, I think the we'll thing, the yeah. thing that definitely is helping Tom Herman besides COVID is the fact that they had to pay so much of a buyout for Charlie Strong yeah. that yeah. I don't think they can really afford his yeah. buyout right now. Yeah. So uh, that's, I think that definitely it will give him another season. All right, let's move on. Next game. Florida six and a half point favorite at Texas A&M. A couple quick stats here. Trask, 684 yards, 10 touchdowns, one interception. Uh, Florida's averaging 500 points per game, 44.5 points per game. Texas A&M is terrible. They're not very good. I know they played Alabama, but they're just not very good. They didn't play very well against Missouri. Um, honestly, the, the Vanderbilt this, or Vanderbilt. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, Vanderbilt. Um, the spread's way too low on this one. I think it should have been up around 13. So. Give me Florida all day long at six and a half. Yeah, I'll take Florida as well. Okay. Virginia Tech is at North Carolina. North Carolina is a five-point favorite. Um, interestingly, though, ESPN's matchup predictor gives uh, Virginia Tech 52.3% chance of winning this game. Yeah, they though. did the same thing with OU Texas. They, yeah. had, a, they had Texas as a uh, yeah. not a strong favorite, but yeah. more than 54%, I think. Yeah. Uh, North Carolina is only giving up 14 points per game and 277 yards of offense per game. Uh, Virginia Tech is averaging 41 points per game and 491 yards per game. So something has to give in this game. Now, North Carolina has played Syracuse and Boston College. So right. yep. um, that, that defensive stat might be a little, um, you know, it, it, it might. But who's Virginia Tech? I, I didn't look who their uh, opponents have been. Duke so. and NC State. Yeah, so I think it's comparable. They're all ACC teams. So yeah. Virginia Tech gave up. 31 uh, to Duke and 24 to, to yeah. NC State. They did have 21 players out, I think, against Duke. Okay. All right. Either Duke or NC State. One of those games, they had 21 players out. Bottom line for me, I'm not going against North Carolina right now, especially yeah. with a lower spread like five. It's at home for North Carolina. Mac Brown has that team just lights out. You know, yeah. They didn't cover last week, but I'm going to take them to cover this week. Yeah, Howell needs to... Um, He's got to keep the, the ball out of the defense hands. He's only thrown three touchdowns, and, and he's thrown three interceptions. Um, Virginia Tech's quarterback, uh, Braxton Burmeister, has thrown one touchdown and one interception. Yeah. Um, so do with that what you will. Uh, in this, I'll take UNC. I'm um, sold on, D on North Carolina's defense. That's why yeah. I'm taking them to cover the yeah. spread. Okay, Duke is a one and a half point favorite at Syracuse. Um, both teams averaging about 17 points per game. Uh, Duke has given up 32 points per game, 440 yards per game. Uh, bottom line is this, all, all that stuff aside, the truth is, if you look at the history of Syracuse, the truth is they play really well at home, they tend to win at home, and they are horrible on the road. The fact that they're home, um, we're, it's still, it's not freezing cold yet, so the Carrier Dome doesn't have any air conditioning. It's yeah. kind of stagnant air. Opponents that come in there early in the season have a hard time playing because of the conditions in there. Um, I got Syracuse outright winning the game, so I'll take Syracuse. Yeah. I'm going to take Syracuse as well, and I'm surprised Duke is, is favored in this one. Yeah. Um, and, and don't get me wrong, DeVito, their quarterback, is not very good. And well, he's, Chase he's, Bryce for, uh, for Duke has thrown... Um, for 993 yards. He's thrown the ball 154 times. Wow, that's better um, than Costello. Yeah, okay. so he's thrown a lot. So he's only thrown three touchdowns on the year and seven interceptions. Yeah. And he coughing the ball up a lot. Yeah. Um, and to Syracuse, who, you know, in, in the past has been a, a team that has decent pass rush. I don't know if those players are still there from yeah. a couple of years ago that, that – uh, they looked decent either. last week. I got to watch a little bit of their game. Okay. So, um, so yeah, I, I'm going to take Syracuse in this. Okay. Uh, Tennessee is at Georgia. Georgia is a 14-point favorite. Before we get into anything else, let me apologize to all Georgia fans. Georgia's for real. And I'm also a believer in Bennett, who probably is going to not get, get the starting job. I think he should keep it until they lose. I mean, he's playing really well. Yeah. He's a good game manager. I was on him, too. I mean, he, I, I just think he should be the starter. I don't think he will be. I think eventually, I think they replace him with JT Daniels. Yeah. Uh, possibly this week because it's Tennessee. Um, but, you know, who starts at quarterback's a question. But that Georgia defense 
is good. Yeah. They are very good. Um, so, you know, 14 points. I, I like what Tennessee's doing. Uh, Tennessee's defense is only giving up 19 points per game. Um, and so what happens with the offense, with Georgia, question mark. But, you know, they were able to score, put points on Auburn. I think they'll put points on Tennessee. I've been going back and forth with this because I think 14 is a perfect spread number. I'm going to take Georgia to cover. I was going to take Tennessee, but I'm going to stick with – I'm going to go against you. Yeah, I'm going to take Tennessee. Tennessee? Yeah. Okay. Um, Texas Tech is at Iowa State. Iowa State's a 13-and-a-half point favorite. Texas Tech's defense giving up 42.3 points per game. That's really the only stat you need to know. Iowa State, I think, covers 13-and-a-half. Yeah, this is the only one that I I really didn't really have a whole lot um, – or I just I, I haven't really picked it yet. I'm I'm probably just gonna pick Wing something it. right now. Okay. Um, Iowa State, you know, they looked really really good. Mm-hmm. Um, can they keep that going? Uh, well, they got their one loss out of the way. They always lose early in the season. Yeah. And they go on a tear. So they are still giving up more points than they're scoring. So is te- uh, Texas Tech. Yeah. Um, and Texas Tech just. I don't know what they did. Uh, maybe that game against Texas was just, you know, too mm-hmm. much, too much emotion in that game. They just gave, gave so much um, in that overtime game against Texas. Um, I'll, I'll pick that. That was a, that was a big win for, um, for Iowa State. I'll, I'll pick them to, to keep rolling. Keep here. rolling. Yeah. Okay. Arkansas is at Auburn. Auburn, sixteen and a half point favorite. Uh, Auburn's offense only averaging 17.5 points per game. Arkansas's defense giving up 25 points per game. Auburn's defense giving up 20 points per game, and Arkansas's offense 15 points per game. So probably a low-scoring game here. Um, I don't, I don't see it be high flying. Um, 16 and a half seems a lot. I mean, I'm, I, I know it's Auburn against Arkansas. I expect Auburn to win the game. But I'm going to take Arkansas again this week to cover the spread because I don't think that Auburn wins by more than 16. Um, Bo Nix is like right at 50% uh, completion percentage. Um, same with Felipe Franks. I mean, he's around the same. Three touchdowns, two interceptions. Bo Nix has thrown three touchdowns, one interception. Um, and I think, too, if Arkansas could go into Auburn and somehow pull up and up, pull off an upset. That See, is the know. spark so this, for that program. This was to the move one forward. that kind of reminds me of um, Mississippi State beating LSU, mm-hmm. and then in turn Arkansas beats Mississippi State. Yeah, was that you know just an emotional? Are they going to have any kind of hangover this week? Sure. Um, so I'm going to take Auburn. Okay. Um, just just based off of the you know. The, the mentality, the the emotions you had to put into um, beating the team that beat the team, you know. Yeah. So um, I'm going to stick with Auburn. Okay, next game. Pitt is a five point favorite at Boston College. I didn't really take a lot of notes. I watched Boston College last week. I watched Pitt last week. Pitt starting to struggle after starting the season off good. Uh, Pickett is kind of falling off his, you know, opening week highs. Um, Boston College's defense looks pretty good. Um, I am taking Boston College, not just – I'm taking them in the points, but I think Boston College wins the game. Yeah, Boston College's uh, quarterback, uh, can't pronounce his last name, Jerk, Jerkovic, mm-hmm. I guess, Jerkovic. Um, he's looked pretty good um, early in the season. Um, Kenny Pickett still has looked good. I mean, he's thrown for 1,123 yards, six touchdowns and two interceptions. Um, they did have that, that hiccup, but they lost one point, um, to NC state this last week. Um, and Boston college lost to, uh, to North Carolina. I'm going to take Pitt. I'm going to just keep riding with them. Okay. Next game is Alabama, 24 and a half point favorite at Ole Miss, uh, Alabama, 92.6% chance of winning on the, on the predictor Lane Kiffin versus Nick Saban. Yeah. No love lost there after the way that ended. Nick Saban will not take his foot off the gas yeah. in this game, and Ole Miss has no defense. Their yeah. defense is nearly non-existent. Roll Tide. Yeah. Roll Tide, Roll Tide, this five times a, over. This they will be a 50-something, a 20-something yeah. game, maybe yeah. even 30-something. Um, but Because Lane Kiffin's offense, they can surprise you, and they can sure. do some fun stuff. Um, 
and move the ball down the field. But um, I just think defensively, uh, Alabama just they've got it this year. They do. I mean, they do. They are just really, uh, to, really good. To me, uh, and and this is no offense to anybody else, like other teams or whatever, but if I'm ranking the top four right now. I think Alabama's number one, and Florida's number two, and Clemson's number three. That's how I would kind of have them. And Georgia would probably be number four right now. Um, that's kind of how I would rank them. But anyway, yeah. uh, so we both have Alabama rolling in this, yeah. right? Okay. Uh, Miami versus Clemson. Clemson, a 16-point favorite. Uh, this is the game to watch. If you're going to only watch one game this weekend, it should be this one. And unfortunately, I'm not going to get to watch it because there's a high school football game that I'm doing play-by-play and streaming. And it got moved to Saturday because of COVID, and it's going to be at seven o'clock. So, yeah, I'm gonna to have to DVR this. But anyway, um, King so far this year, 736 yards and six touchdowns. Lawrence, 848 yards, seven touchdowns. Uh, both teams averaging around 42 points per game. Clemson's D giving up 12 points per game. Miami's defense giving up 19 points per game. I think this is going to be an absolutely incredible game, and I think yeah. it comes down to the wire which is why I have to take Miami because I don't think there's any way Clemson covers 16. Yeah, I'm taking Miami for sure. Um, yeah. I think that as far as uh, ACC, an ACC battle, Clemson doesn't typically this early in the season um, really have to battle. I yeah. mean, they, they're usually five, six, seven games in before they really get their true test. Yeah. Um, just because the ACC typically over the last few years, no offense to ACC fans, but – um, hasn't been that great. So right. I think that this is a good early test for Clemson. Yep. If they win this one, then they deserve to be that number one spot. This, this feels like, like yeah. a, a playoff game to get in the playoffs yeah. is what it feels like. Yeah. So, uh, all right, so you're taking I'm Miami. I'm taking Miami as well. All right, I uh, hope you got Hurricane Don't Let Us Down. The U, baby. Uh, Florida State at Notre Dame. Notre Dame, 21.5-point favorite. Notre Dame, Notre they Dame. cover Florida State. Yep. Just dumpster fire. <laughs> Uh, Mississippi State is at Kentucky. Kentucky is a three-point favorite. Uh, Costello, 79 of 119, 936 yards, six touchdowns, and five interceptions so far this year. Wilson has only thrown for 390 yards, one touchdown, one interception. We said it before the season started. I ripped on Wilson. He can't throw the ball. A bunch of Kentucky fans said, you don't know what he's done all over the summer. No, he didn't do anything. He didn't do anything to help himself because he still can't throw the ball. He has... Um, he has rushed 35 times for 171 yards and three touchdowns. So leading rusher. They're a, they're a running team. That's just what they are. This is like Kentucky feels like OU last year where Jalen Hurts just ran all the time. Yeah. Uh, although Hurts could throw if he needed to. But um, I, I, I don't know. Mississippi State's just going to throw everywhere. Kentucky does have a good defense. It's at Kentucky. I've been back and forth with this, um, but Kentucky's defense has been giving up 35 points per game, and Mississippi State's going to throw all over the place. I think Mississippi State wins the game, so I'm going to take Mississippi State. Yeah. Um, Kentucky gave, gave up 29 to Auburn and 42 to, to um, Ole Miss. Um, and then Mississippi State, they had that really impressive win. I, I think I had it originally – who did you take? I took Mississippi State. Yeah. Originally I had Kentucky down, but um, – I wonder if if uh, Leach just kind of clears the cobwebs, yeah. you know, after that. I think they bounced back. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that a lot of that was just hangover from beating LSU, and yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'll pick uh, Mississippi. I think I've picked Kentucky two weeks now, and they've let me down. Yep. So I'll okay. go with Mississippi State. Last game, Miss uh, Missouri is at LSU. LSU is a nineteen and a half point favorite. Missouri. Giving up 36.5 points per game and 418 yards per game. Almost no defense. Miles Brennan and the LSU offense can put up points. Their defense has been a little suspect so far at the beginning of this year. I think they eventually get that figured out. But Missouri, I don't think they can hang with LSU. I think LSU covers 19.5. What happened to Sean Robinson? I don't know. That's from a good TCU. Question. He went to Missouri. Yeah. Is he injured? Somebody tell us if he's injured. I think yeah. he is. He's not playing is all I know. So. Yeah, because um, he, he was supposed to be uh, their quarterback this year. Now they got a freshman, uh, Connor Bazelak, yep. um, who's thrown for 286 yards and one interception, no touchdowns. Um, I'll take LSU in this. Okay. That's it. That's our picks for week six. Uh, it is 
it's actually not the midway point because you we're still have a lot got more extra. yeah you still got two conferences who haven't yeah. even started play I mean yeah. and, and we've got a month left before they even yeah, start exactly so uh, good thing for us is more shows this year so yeah. more weeks to pick so yeah. hey we appreciate all of you watching please uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed like the video always leave your comments try to respond to as many as we can and that's it for week uh, six picks and we'll see you in the next time in our next show take care. Thank you.